Hello there you beautiful people! Now one key thing that probably brought you to work with Linux is the idea of open source software. But what does that term really mean? Well in this video we're going to talk about the GNU project and what it actually means for software to be open source and the history of the whole open source movement. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we probably need to understand is what Linux actually is. When we hear the word Linux, we probably think of a whole operating system that, that we use as being the Linux operating system. Now surprisingly, this is actually not the case, and Linux is actually just one of the pieces of the whole operating system, the kernel. So let me explain. On the 27th of September in 1983, a person called Richard Storman announced that he was going to begin developing uh, a operating system that was similar to the Unix operating system, but made of entirely free software. Now, the operating system was called the GNU operating system, spelled G-N-U, which stands for GNU is not Unix, which they like to call a recursive acronym. Okay. Now, in, nine, in January 1984, Richard Storman quit his job in the Artificial Intelligence Lab at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, so MIT, to work on the GNU project full-time in the aims of creating an operating system made of completely free software. Now, the term free software actually refers to several freedoms that the software gives the user, rather than being free as in money. So when you hear the term free software, think free speech and not free lunch. Now, these freedoms are, uh, the first, first one is the freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose. So that's the first freedom. The second freedom is the freedom to study how the program works and change it so that it does the computing as you wish, which is what freedom one is, okay? Freedom one is that the program will do what you wish, and freedom two um, is the freedom to study how the program works and to change it so that it does as you wish. Now, access to the source code for a program is a precondition for this. You can't study how a program program works unless you can look at its code. So having access to the source code is a precondition for freedom number two. The third freedom is the freedom to redistribute copies of the software so that you can, uh, as they say, help your neighbor. And freedom number four is the freedom to distribute copies of your modified version of um, of your of the software. So if you modify it, you can redistribute that, uh, which links to freedom number three of helping other people. But uh, by and apparently by doing this, you can give the whole community a chance to benefit from your changes. And again, access to the source code is a precondition for this. Okay, so if you want to modify software and redistribute it, you need to have access to the source code in order to be able to change it. Now, there's a license that legally provides a user uh, of software with these freedoms, and it's known as the GNU Public License, or the GPL. Now, there's several versions of the GNU Public License, or the GPL, but at the time of recording, the GPL version 3 is the most modern version. Um, but in 1991, the GNU system was almost finished, but there was still one part missing from the GNU operating system, and it was an important part. This final piece is a major part of every operating system, and it's called the kernel. Now, the kernel is responsible for allocating the resources on the computer's hardware that is required by the software that it's running. So it's the interface layer between a computer's hardware and the applications that it's running. Okay. Now, at this time, uh, in 1991, a man called Linus Torvalds was completing his MSc thesis at the University of Helsinki in Finland. And as part of this work, Linus invented a Unix-like kernel called Linux. And it was called Linux after his own name, but everything in the Unix world uh, kind of ends in an X. So Linus ending in an X is Linux. Okay. And after being, invite after being invited by a fellow student to go see a talk by Richard Storman, um, who was also a prominent activist at the time, Linus re released the Linux kernel under the version 2 of the GNU Public License or GPL, thereby making the Linux kernel free software. So thanks to the Linux kernel, the GNU operating system was complete and was a fully runnable operating system made of entirely free software um, with those four freedoms we talked to you about before, and it began to gain popularity. And it's in fact the Linux kernel that is used today on um, on Android devices and even Chrome OS. So if you ever hear people say, oh, Android runs Linux or Chrome uh, OS runs Linux, what they mean is they use the Linux kernel to interface between um, the software layer and the hardware layer of your computer. But because the Linux kernel was the final piece, it kind of got a whole lot of attention, and the rest of the work that went into the GNU operating system was kind of forgotten. But because what we run when we run a distribution like Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution is actually the GNU operating system and the Linux kernel, it is recommended that in order to give the GNU project its credit, instead of just calling the whole thing Linux, we should call it GNU+. 
plus Linux. In fact, there is a command called the uname command that will actually tell you loads of information about your computer, such as what hardware it has and what operating system that it's running. So if you run the uname command with the O option, um, it'll tell you your operating system. So if we run that, we see that we, can, that we get GNU slash Linux as the operating system. So that's pretty cool, right? Okay, so with that history understood, we now know pretty much all of the commands that we've used so far in the course, such as the ls command and the find command and so on, are all part of the GNU project. And to give the users the freedoms that free software provides, the source code needs to be available to read, uh, because access to the source code is a precondition for those freedoms, right? So in other words, the software must be open source. Okay, so the source code must be openly accessible, it's open source. So how can we have a look at the code that our computer runs? Well, it's actually all freely accessible on the GNU project's official website, gnu.org. So if I just open up a Firefox browser here, and when that boots up, we head over to gnu.org, um, we'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So here we are, here's Firefox. Let's go to gnu.org and press enter. There we go. So you can read all about the um, the philosophy behind the free software uh, ideology in more detail. And you can see here it's telling you to try GNU Linux here. Um, but if you head over to the software section, so if we click on software here and scroll down to a part that says all GNU packages, so here it says all GNU packages, um, you can you can see here that there's every there's basically links to every bit of code that is run on a GNU system, including a free software version of the Linux kernel itself, which we can find under the Linux Libra package. So here we are, Linux Libra. Okay, that's the that's the package, that's the fold downloadable folder that contains all of the source code for the um for the Linux kernel itself, so that's pretty awesome. Now for all the commands that you've run so far, such as the ls command, grep, find, um, whatever it might be, okay, um, you can find those under the core utils package. There we are, core utils, okay. So that's where you can find the stuff in there, in that core utils package. And in the next video, we're going to download the core utils package, modify it, and install um, a new version of the ls command to our computer, which is gonna be super, super exciting. But first, let's just take a quick recap of what we've learned in this video. Okay, so in this video, you learned about Richard Stallman beginning the development of the GNU operating system in 1983, and the idea was to create a Unix-like operating system that was made of entirely free software. And you learned that when we say the words free software, we mean software that provides users with certain freedoms. So think of free speech rather than free lunch okay now the four there are four freedoms that the free uh, the free software gives the users so it gives the users the ability to run programs as they wish for any purpose it gives the users the ability to study how a program works and change it so it does the computing as they wish and access to source code is a precondition for that um, it gives the users the ability to free di freely distribute um, any copies they get uh, so that they can help out other people and it also gives the users the ability to distribute modified versions of of the software that they create to other people. Um, so this uh, allows the whole community to benefit from any changes that a user makes. And again, access to source code is a precondition for that as well. Now, these freedoms are legally provided to users using the GNU public license or the GPL. And as I, as the time of recording, uh, the, th the third version of the GPL, so GPL version three is the most modern version of the license. And open access to the source code is a precondition for giving these freedoms. So, and when a software has openly accessible source code, it is known as open source software. So, you can say that free software is open source, but not all soft, or not all open source software is free software because whilst people might let you see the source code, that doesn't mean they necessarily give you the freedoms required to modify and distribute it. They might just let you see the source code, okay? But the other, but free software does let, does uh, require open source software, so it works one way but not the other. And you've also learned that in 1991, the GNU project was almost finished, but it had a important missing piece, which was the kernel. And the kernel is the part of the operating system that interfaces between the hardware and allocates resources um, from the hardware uh, depending upon what software requires it and in, in 1991 Linus Torvalds um, created his own version of a kernel um, and called it the Linux kernel and released it in uh, 1991 under the GNU 
public license version 2, thereby making it free software. So the Linux kernel was the final piece for the GNU operating system and now the two tend to work together. So when you download Ubuntu or when you download any other type of Linux um, distribution, what you're actually downloading is a version of the GNU plus Linux operating system. So henceforth, we won't just call it Linux, we'll call it the GNU Linux operating system. Okay, so in the next video, now that we understand um, this little bit of a history lesson, we understand about the freedoms and what open source software is all about, we're going to play with some source code. Okay, we're going to download and take a look at some of the source code for some core commands, modify their code, and install that modified code on our computer and see how they behave differently. So, this is going to be amazing and it's going to really allow you to see what open source free software is all about. So, for all that goodness, I'll see you in the next video.